Well, good morning, everybody. <coughs> now, I know that all of you have been doing a project on Antarctica. Now, I must tell you that projects on Antarctica are very popular in schools in England. And I, I live in Cambridge, and there are lots of schools in the villages around Cambridge, and I have to go quite often to show the children at these schools the pictures I'm going to show you, so they can complete their projects. Now, you know what happened to me. I went to one of these schools, and the lady whose class it was lives just around the corner from me. And I went to the school and I talked to them and 10 days later there was a ring at my doorbell and here was the school teacher. And I said to her, good morning, and what brings you here? Oh, she said, I've, I've come to ask you a favour. I said, a favour? What? She said, all the projects have been finished and I want you to mark them. <laughs> And, a good idea. and I said, uh, well, very politely I said to her, I'm sorry, but that was not part of the deal. <laughs> so anyway, she had to take them away. But you see, a project on the Antarctic is very important because there are so many different aspects that you can deal with in the project. You can deal with the exploration, you can deal with the climate, the clothing people wear, the food, the travel. Um, in the old days with husky dogs, nowadays with uh, vehicles like snow cats and motor toboggans and, and so on. So, and of course the way you write up your project is very important too that you use the, the right terminology, the right words to go with what you're trying to say. But the thing that surprises me very much indeed is that if you take any textbook on geography, you find to your horror and amazement that Antarctica is dealt with in one page, sometimes only half a page. So there is really a very big demand for a textbook on, and uh, a geography textbook on Antarctica. So what we really need to do, if you could switch on the projector, please. The white switch at the bottom. Yes. That's it. Uh, to the left a bit. That, that's it. Thank you. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is to tell you about the geography of Antarctica. Antarctica is a very big continent. It has an area of five and a half million square miles, which is more than twice the area of the United States. Here is the South Pole, right there, right in the middle of the continent. And at the South Pole, the height of this, the ice above sea level is 10,500 feet, and the bedrock below the ice is only 350 feet above sea level. So at the South Pole, the ice has a thickness of nearly two miles. Two miles, that is a lot. Now, in Antarctica as a whole, there is a lot of ice. And we know, because it's been worked out on computers, that if all the snow and ice in Antarctica were to melt tomorrow, sea level would rise by about 200 feet. Are you 200 feet above the sea here? If you're not, you'd have to start swimming. 
because the sea level would rise very fast indeed. Now we hear also about climatic warming all over the world. And in Antarctica, of course, climatic warming is very effective indeed because uh, snow and ice turns to water very easily. Now, this big continent <coughs> is divided geographically into two parts. This part here, which we call West Antarctica, and this part here, which we call East Antarctica. And there is a high mountain range that runs along there, the Transantarctic Mountains, it rises to 15,000 feet. Now, this part of Antarctica is part of the continental shield. This part is the part that was connected to Africa and Australia and India, which is now in the Northern Hemisphere, when all of these continents formed one big continent called Gondwana. Now this part here is quite different from this part. Incidentally, I forgot to tell you the world's largest coal field is under East Antarctica. Now this part is quite different because this is part of the Andean mountain chain. The Andes come down here into, from South America into Tierra del Fuego. They go along here in the Scotia Arc to South Georgia, the South Sandwich Islands, <coughs> the South Orkney Islands, the South Shetland Islands, into the Antarctic Peninsula. The northern bit is called Graham Land. The southern bit is called Palmer Land and then right across West Antarctica and up into New Zealand. This here is called the Antarct Andes. The Andes in South America and the Antarct Andes. So from the point of view of mineral resources, one would expect that East Antarctica would have similar mineral resources to the other southern continents and that the Antarctic Peninsula would have mineral resources similar to those of South America. <clears throat> now before 1960, when the Antarctic Treaty was signed, and that was to say that all sovereignty claims in Antarctica would be frozen, for the next 30 years, this continent was divided, that's better, yeah, <coughs> that's too low, put a thinner, put a thinner book in, that's fine. This continent was divided into a number of sectors, like a Christmas cake. This part here, by prior discovery, was claimed by Norway. This part here, and that bit there by Australia. This piece by New Zealand. And this little sliver here by France. Now this part here, to the south of South America, including the Antarctic Peninsula, was claimed in a different way. Uh, this part here was claimed by Chile, this part here by Argentina, and Britain claimed the lot. And the reason for this is <clears throat> that it was an Englishman, Edward Bransfield, who discovered Antarctica in 1820. Now in the late 1800s there were lots of sealers and whalers with their ships in the southern ocean here and they were busy catching whales and, and fur seals and so on. <clears throat> now this sector here it says on the map unclaimed. That is quite true. 
But if you look at a, an American version of this, you'll find that it says here, claimed by the United States. Now that isn't true. Now you'll notice also that Russia has never claimed any part of Antarctica. And yet the Russians say that it was a Russian von Bellingshausen who discovered Antarctica. Now likewise, the Americans will tell you that it was an American, Nathaniel Palmer, who discovered Antarctica, and that isn't true either, because I've seen the original maps of both Palmer and von Bellingshausen. And I've also seen Edward Bransfield's original map. And later on I'll show... You have never seen them? No, they have. Oh, you have? Good. Now you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> now, later on, I will show you the first part of Antarctica that was discovered. Now, the Antarctic Treaty was signed for 30 years, so it finished in 1990. It was signed in 1960, finished in 1990, and it has been renewed for another 30 years. And that is very important because the treaty bans the dumping of all nuclear waste in Antarctica. It uh, pays a lot of attention to nature conservation, not only on the continent, but in the seas around. And it also deals <coughs> with mining, that in Antarctica you don't need to have any mining at all because any black materials in the form of black dust that settle on the snow would absorb the sun's heat and melt the snow. So it would melt even faster than it's melting at the moment. <clears throat>